It's definitely been a while, guys. Uncle Peasel channel is back. I have a lot of idea for content. This is my third Gen 4 runner. And today, something super simple and quick. I wanted to taste test this adventure meal here. The spicy Southwest style skillet. Basically, you just add water and you're good to go. So I do have my jet boil here, which if I can find an excuse to use this bad boy, I'm like a gadget guy. I've, I've definitely roughed it in my uh, deployment in Afghanistan, but this thing is, it's so cool. You like my glasses. This thing is so cool. I can't wait to show you guys how it works. And it should be a pretty short video here. Boils water very quickly, as well as milk. I wouldn't suggest it. I burned some milk in there. It's got a measuring cup on the bottom for you. It will come with a little stand here for your little tank of isobutane propane mixture here. You can kind of clip this in and you can set it up like that. I really haven't used this yet, but it is there if I would like to use it, which is great because I like options. It will come with this burner, which is great. And also an adapter if you would like to place a small pan on top, something like this. I really haven't used it yet, but you can set a pan on top of that. But today we're just boiling water. So I did a little bit of research. This little 100 gram um, gas canister here, this fuel mixture on Amazon is $18.95. And this same type of mixture from Walmart, which is easily accessible for me to pick up, which is 440 grams was $9 and 22 cents so I'm, I'm not saying that you can like that, that's the best bet here but that's what i'm going to be using today is this bigger one here so you're going to want to screw it on very quickly and it's on you're going to want to put your jet boil on top of here it does have a little locking mechanism here slide it on and now we are not good to go didn't slide it in there we go we should be good to go now so this is your jet boil setup According to the instructions here, we're gonna need 12 ounces of water. Now this bottom cup that comes with the jet boil does have measurements here in ounces. So I'm gonna pour in, so we have eight ounces of water and we need four more, easy enough. Now this thing does not take very long at all to boil your water. If you look away for just a little bit, it will be overflowing. That's what happened with my milk for the hot chocolate I boiled a few weeks back. So to actually get this bad boy going, you're gonna have your fuel here, plus and minus, obviously, and then you have an igniter switch here. So I'm gonna slowly turn on my gas. As I hear it exiting, I'm gonna actually hit the igniter. Okay. Now I'm gonna try to get you guys a good view here. This bad boy is going to be boiling really quickly here. If you forget about it, it's going to be way too fast of a boil. So I don't like to crank it too much. That's pretty good to me. It does sound like a jet engine, hence the name Jet Boil. So once this is boiled, we will pour it in our bag of adventure meals. And our water is boiling, so I'm going to turn it down. It went the wrong way there. Turn it down. Water is boiled. So that took maybe a minute and that wasn't a lot of water at all. So I got my gas completely turned off here to the right and they do have little handles here on the side. And you, there's actually plastic on this burner you can grip it by because you don't want to grab that metal right there. So I can just slightly unscrew it, put that aside and to make sure that I don't make a mess here because sometimes the water does spill out when I'm pouring. So slowly pour this in. I'm gonna give it a stir, which is recommended. Close it up for about four minutes. I do have these cute little, little utensils, guys. This will be a different video in itself. I did not come up with this idea. This is a rigid toolbox. But this is going to turn into like camping supplies, little things here and there. I'm trying to figure out Cholula, you know, we got it. So let me get my utensils out and stir this up. I guess we can do a quick walk around of my 2001 Forerunner. It is the SR5 4x4 edition. I don't have a rear locker yet. I do have one, but I do need to install it and figure out all the wiring for that. The suspension is an Icon 2.5. 
Um, everything is Icon except my rear shocks are Bilstein 5100s. Oops, sorry about that. So we do have a little bit more clearance here. I do have 16 by eight method wheels, zero offset and Falcon Wild Peak 265, 75, 16. I know I could go bigger to 33s. These are roughly a very small 32 inch tire. I think it's 31.6. But if you can see here already, you know, clearance is a little sketchy already. If I go bigger tires as I'm turned, I will have some rubbing and I just don't want to rub. Um, I don't have a high clearance front bumper yet, but I do have one ordered already, which will give me the capabilities to have a winch to hopefully never have to use, but it's always nice to be over-prepared rather than under-prepared. Um, like I said, I got the Bilstein 5100s down here for my rear shocks, and then I have the rear coils there from Icon as well. In terms of my rack, Prinsu roof rack, pretty common in the overlanding scene. Some max tracks, which can get me out of a sticky situation if I don't have any traction under my tires. You basically just slide this under your tire and then climb out. Hopefully, this is an Apache rifle case from Harbor Freight. I took all the stickers off. I did watch a couple YouTube videos on how to install that. It's literally four carriage bolts, and that is pretty much it to install that because the carriage bolts slide right into these teeth here, which is great. And that's just for like recovery gear, breaker bar, toe straps, etc. But in terms of the interior, guys, it's been very well maintained since I've had it. My dad had it before me. And there's really not like anything wrong with it. I got my seats down in the back. Everything is pretty cherry, if I do say so myself. But I almost forgot about our food over here. So they say to give it a stir after a few minutes. It kind of looks like baby food, not gonna lie. But in terms of a quick meal, I, I mean, I don't think you can go wrong here. I do have different flavors I can try in the future. And I, I, you know, I didn't have to come out here to review this. Like I didn't have to drive all the way out here, but I thought it would just give it a little bit more of a campy feeling if I wasn't in the comfort of my backyard. This, one more time, the spicy Southwest style skillet from Adventure Meals. I've ate a lot of stuff like this in the past. It smells good. It's actually really good. It has potatoes, shredded beef, black beans, green chilies, and vegetables. Freeze dried. At like, look, no cappuccino, guys. I'm not, I'm not lying to you. I'd have no sponsors, I wouldn't lie. This is actually really good. All right. Uh -huh. Woo! You put this in a tortilla, mm. a little breakfast burrito. This feels like a breakfast meal to me because of the shredded potatoes like hash browns. I wouldn't lie to you guys here. Hopefully this looks appetizing to you, but you need a quick meal, you're on the trail, you're camping it's real quick. It's actually not bad. I'm, I'm actually impressed. This is better than the MREs I ate in the military. No lie. Now they say this is for two people. I'm gonna eat it all by myself, but not bad. The, the fir first impressions, really good here. Not bad at all. All right guys, hopefully I don't have any uh, meat in my beard here, but I'm trying to do Uncle Pizzo uploads once a week at least on Tuesdays. So today was the adventure meal here, which was pretty good. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribing is free and uh, y'all stay sweaty.